lovely i'm recording uh we'll start with jeremy and then if we could flag questions in the chat box that would be great so jeremy langdon sky sports news hi lisa how are you doing uh very well thanks jeremy how are you yeah i'm pretty good uh, lamenting the uh, the men's performance in the ashes but we'll uh, we'll carry on um just tell us first of all how the covid situation is um you had an issue i know with one of the staff but is there any more covid in the camp heading to adelaide no, we had we had an issue with a difficult staff member, but we're all good. We've had our PCR tests um, and they've all come back clear. So everyone bar one staff member is here, um, but we're all good to go. And how would you say um, preparations in Canberra were in the end? Did you have any uh, inter-squad matches and how is everyone? Uh, <laughs> we did have some inter-squad matches, some interesting ones, actually. Um, I, I wouldn't say... Uh, we've started that well, to be totally honest. Um, we're trying to get up to speed as best we can. We've played a couple of internal matches. I uh, played a 35-over match after sitting around with rain for three hours and then went out and played that. Um, and then we had two T20s, which we lost both. So um, still a bit rusty, you could say. So uh, how confident then, given that, are you about the upcoming uh, series, starting with the T20s? and Given the fact that the T20s are starting, what kind of dynamic does that throw on the whole Ashes net, do you think? Uh, look, uh, with COVID, you've got to be flexible. And you've got to change and adapt. We've learned that over the last couple of years, that's for sure. Um, we've got a really big couple of trainings coming up over the next two days that we've got to get right. We've got to get the players um, hitting the ball well and bowling in good areas and, and sharpening up. Um, I think the T20s, they'll trying to go too early. They want it to click, you know, they want to get off and going really well. Um, and in the practice matches, they probably uh, didn't do the basics first and then expand, get up and down, hit the ball in the middle um, and then go and then build from there. They probably went too early. They wanted it to happen, um, which didn't play out that well for us. But uh, they know what they need to do. We've got two good trainings prepped over the next couple of days. So I'm confident um, we get to that first T20 and they'll be in a better place than what they are now. And we'll, we'll you know, um, do our best to, to go 2 nil up. Lisa, the whole country's mourning the men's team and the loss of the Ashes. Are, are the women's Ashes going to be more competitive, do you think? Well, I don't think Raf is because she's in what, green and yellow, so she's not mourning. Um, <laughs> oh, look, Australia are very excited about um, winning the Ashes um, and, and we've got to turn it around and try and dim the flame, so to speak, and, and get a few wins on the board and put them under pressure and, and get into our Ashes as quick as we can. Sure. Um, DRS is going to be part of this Ashes too. How significant is that, do you think? Yeah, I think it's really important. I think uh, throughout... This, our summer, um, we had DRS and, and some calls were really crucial, to be honest, that um, we got right and we we generally um, did all right within that process. I think the girls are quite clear on how they want to go about it. And um, I think it just takes that howler out and doesn't wreck a test match or uh, one day. We had some really crucial decisions go our way and uh, and against us, and they got overturned, and the right decision was made, which made, I suppose, both sides quite happy that um, we know it's there and we can call for it if we need it, and um, it, it keeps the game going and we're not talking about a decision um, at the, come the end of the game. Sure. Lisa, just finally from me, you're an Australian leading England in Australia. It's a special tour for you. How are you feeling about this one? Um, I, I'm good. I've probably coached more in England than Australia. I know the girls, probably uh, a lot of the English girls better than the Australian girls um, personally. Um, so, you know, if you want to coach at the top level, you don't necessarily get to coach in your home country. So um, England, I'm really excited to be coaching England. They're a, a very good organisation and probably in a very exciting place in women's cricket in the organisation. So from that point of view, it's going from strength to strength and I'm very honoured to be able to, um, I suppose, uh, lead the team in a way um, to go out and try and win an Ashes series, even though I'm on the other side this time. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Sonia, please. 
Hi, Lisa. Hi. Um, I was just wondering how much of a hindrance the reduced prep is going to be to, you said that the team's a bit rusty. So how much of an impact has that reduced preparation time been? Uh, to be honest, I don't think rusty is probably the right, right word. The girls, um, we've worked really hard in, in Loughborough um, and they were in a really good place. We went over to Oman and it, uh, the batters took a little while to get going. The bowlers started really well over there. But by the end of um, our preparation over there, they were back to normal. They are in, in the same spot. Um, you know, we've had a bit of rain around in Canberra and um, the practice wickets haven't been that, that great, to be honest, as a batter to feel like confident, I suppose. And look, there's no doubt the girls know the pressure of an Ashes series. Um, and in the practice matches that showed, um, you know, they want to start well and they're probably putting a bit of pressure on themselves at the moment. But you expect that as an international cricketer to put pressure on yourself and you want to perform. So um, I think by the time we get there, I'm confident we'll be in a really good place. And um, T20, I think, is a real good format for us. Uh, the girls play it really well. Um, you know, in the last T20 um, competition, we, we were going really well to, you know, obviously we got washed out um, and losing the first match cost us. But I think we were just hitting our straps then. And in the summer, we've played some really good T20 cricket. So it's a good format. They are confident in it. Um, they're just sort of edging to get going, I suppose. And, and we'll see how we go on Thursday. With that said, do you think starting with the T20s rather than the test match is, is an advantage for you? Uh, advantage. I don't think any format against Australia is easy. <laughs> I think they're strong in all three formats. Um, so I don't really think it matters what we play. Um, I think the Ashes have floated around all different formats. Um, we prepped for a test match first um, and... Um, now we've had to flip and adapt and the, and the staff and the players, we're doing that as best we can. Um, but in saying that, I think uh, if we can get to that place where we want to be on Thursday and, and um, go out strong, um, it doesn't really matter which format. You know, if we were playing the test match, we'd be in the same situation. We've had eight days to prepare. Um, so they'd be still edgy. They would be still wanting to feel the ball in the middle of the bat. They still want to get the ball in the right areas. Um, it's, it's been a challenge, but that's international cricket at the moment and you just got to adapt. And um, I think mentally is the biggest area where we've got to adapt. Um, and, and we've been doing that for the last 18 months. So I'm confident we can do it again. Well, you've just Sorry, muted yourself, Sonia. Sonia. Mute. Sorry, finally from me, it's obviously a very long tour with the Ashes and then the Women's World Cup. Does that sort of play into your reckoning when it comes to squad selection, the need to sort of maybe potentially rest and rotate over this quite long time period? Yeah, there's a lot of parts of the jigsaw this trip. <laughs> um, that as a coach, you know, it's, it's a challenge. Um, to get everything right. So um, I very much doubt, um, firstly, we've got to see how everyone pulls up each game. Um, I think that's most important. Um, the second, we've got sometimes different plays for different formats, and that's happened over the last, you know, 18 months. Um, so there's some players potentially getting ready for a test match now where other players we still, um, you know, we've got selection meeting coming up, you know, tonight and obviously before the first game where we've got to make some big decisions, um, which is great, um, ones we won't shy away from. Um, so, oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, yes, we'll be thinking about the World Cup throughout this Ashes, and I think Australia will be too. Uh, yes, we'll be concerned that we don't get injuries um, and we've got our full squads to select from. 
Um, so that, that will be on the forefront of our mind. Coming into the back end of the Ashes, we know we've got a 10-day quarantine where you don't want a key player to have injury because they can't be treated throughout that phase of that, that 10 days. So there's a lot of things and sometimes we've just got to wait and see how it's all panning out, you know. Perfect world, they're all fit come the end and we can select our best team for every game. That's what we'll be planning to do, but uh, I'm not hiding away that, you know, we do think about, gosh, we want our full squad to be available for the World Cup. Um, that's for sure, especially when we're the holders of it and we want to defend the, the title. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Raf, please. Don't know if I'm going to talk to you, Raf, in those colours. I'd like to say that my outfit has no bearing on uh, my <laughs> my support for either side, um, first of all. Um, so um, given the, the result in the, um, the England v England A T20s, are you looking at any of the England A players? Is there any temptation to bring some of those into the main squad and play them? Uh, look... Both squads, um, one, it's great that they um, put up really good performances. You know, they're, they're very, you can't tell me every one of those players aren't trying to prove a point and get selected for England. Um, and they did that. They played really well. Um, we do have players that we, we know are really close. Um, and we have spoken about a number of players within that squad that could come in. Um, as I said, we've got some really hard selections coming up, um, but it's really good that I think having the T21 first sometimes, you know, would have been really nice to have the test match and they, the two teams, you know, playing T21 dayers, and then we go into those formats. That would have been really nice to have to see how those players go stepping up to the next level under pressure, um, playing, you know, their first taste of England, and some have obviously played for England. Um, so I am a little bit disappointed um, for that aspect that we can't see um, what those players are and where they're at. Um, so it makes it a little bit harder with selection, but. Um, it's not as if we don't know who they are and where they're at. Um, it's just a matter of um, do they fit with what we need. Um, and in terms of the, um, the kind of COVID difficulties and restrictions and obviously thinking about this hard 10-day quarantine you've got coming up going into New Zealand, how difficult is it for you as the coach to kind of manage the mental health of the players in this situation and are you doing anything in particular to try and look after that the mental health of those players yeah look it's not just the players it's the players and staff to be honest raf we're all people um so we're really mindful of that and we have been um you know my philosophy is you make sure the person's right and you get the best cricketer and that doesn't change and sometimes you know um to do that, you need to get people away or have a break or um, get them recharged and stuff. And I really do hold my hand up if someone is in that space and we need to think of their mental health, well, the cricket comes second. Um, sometimes you probably, you guys probably don't see that, but we're trying to look after our staff and players the best we can. Um, we treat them all individually. And I think what I've learned on this journey of COVID is that everyone's bucket gets full at different times and you can't pick it. Um, you really can't. You think um, one day they're okay and you could talk to them two days later and they're not coping. So it is a challenge. I think it's a challenge in sporting teams and being an athlete over the last 18 months. Um, but we do try our best. We've got a fantastic medical support staff who do everything they can to make sure we're all okay um, but it is challenging being a coach in this time is there's so many moving parts it's just unbelievable but in that I could say I've learned a lot over the last 18 months where I'm sure a lot of other coaches and players have as well so look it's at the forefront uh, we want players when we get to New Zealand not not flagging <laughs> we got to work out somehow um, to make sure they're there and they're fresh 
Um, and, you know, that, that may be a part of the ashes. We don't know. As I said, everyone's different. Everyone's bucket gets challenged at different times. So we just have to wait and see. Everyone's in a good place now that we're all positive. Good. And the other stress is we've got to get on that chartered flight. Uh, and pass your PCR test leading into that. So there's a lot of moving parts. And, and finally, um, Heather Knight's talked about um, kind of fighting fire with fire um, and being really aggressive um, in the approach of the team. Is that is that something that's that's come from you? Um, or you know, would you kind of echo that as a strategy in the series? Uh, I think the last 18 months we've tried to be attacking with our cricket and play positive cricket. And I think our T20 um, shows that. I think in the test match, um, there was moments where we tried to move the game forward and, you know, it's not easy. Not many teams um, declare um, and, and go back out for so many overs. We knew that may have a price at the end of the season. Um, you know, we, we look to play positive cricket and, um, go out and take it to teams, you know, try and put the pressure back on them. So I, I think that's something we've worked towards over the late last 18 months. And now we're playing the best in the world. Um, we've got to go out there and talk the talk, I suppose, and still be able to play the brand of cricket and the style we want. So being bold, um, whatever words we use, um, hopefully you'll see us, if we're going to win, we've got to uh, we can't sit back against Australia. You've got to take wickets early. Uh, you've got to try and put pressure on. Um, and you've got to put their bowlers under pressure. So if you want to call that being bold or trying to play our brand of cricket, um, you know, you can use bold if you want. Um, we use lots of words. We use bold. We, we use dominate. We use, you know, whatever um, gets the message across. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Raf. Uh, and Nick, please. I think we'll probably end with Nick because it's getting late here, but we'll see if anyone else wants to jump in. Thanks. Hi, Lisa. Um, just on the almost on the logistical side of the schedule swap, how, how much has that changed the way you were looking at spending the build-up? I know you had the three-day game, the two-day game with England A locked in, but um, sort of just training-wise, how much has... I guess, how much have you had to alter sort of quite late notice in terms of how you go about prepping the players? We've had to alter everything since Oman. <laughs> everything we prep for. I mean, uh, what, the Ashes got changed three weeks ago. Um, but I, I suppose over the last two years and knowing we've got um, multi-format series, uh, we change things all the time. So if if we rock up in the nets are not that great, we we go to four ball, we go to red ball cricket, and and we say you know it's day three. If we've got brand new pitches and it's really nice, we we go to T twenty cricket. Um, so throughout our training, um, we're always changing it anyway to get the players able to adapt as best they can and flip their mindset. Um, I'm not too sure what your question was about can you just repeat what no, it was, it was sorry it was, it was mainly what you was mainly what you said just in terms of how yeah i guess how you've sort of had to shift from red ball to white ball prep in the last sort of three four weeks yeah well we we knew we had um two days for practice i suppose with the center wicket so we spoke about it and we thought we need a bit of volume, so let's do the 40 over match. But at the same time, we know we've got a huge workload, so we couldn't make it too long. Um, to play two T20s, we had planned one um, because we know we had to travel and then we, we're playing in three days' time. Um, uh, and then we, we went to two to give them a bit more volume, um, a bit more time in the middle. Um, so... We're just forever changing and adapting and we're trying to get the best prep we can in, in eight days. So, um, yeah, we just keep working at it. Cool. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Nick. There is actually just time for one more. Stefan, please. Hi, Lisa. How are you? 
Um, yeah, good, given thank you. The, um, given the, the complications or the, the alterations you've had to make to the ASHES schedule and the challenges of going into the 10 days hard quarantine, should the World Cup be going ahead in New Zealand or should it have been moved to a country with more relaxed entry requirements? Well, I don't think any other country in the world minds that it's on when it's on. I mean, the Ashes is a pretty big format and the ICC, um, I don't think, is going to move the World Cup because we're playing the Ashes. <laughs> Uh, so I think it's just, I mean, both countries have decided to play, continue to play um, the Ashes because we thought it was really good prep leading in and um, for us coming out and playing um, in the winter and then leading into the World, World Cup is perfect prep. Um, now that the COVID quarantine's changed, I mean, I, that's a country thing. <laughs> um, and it only changed, what, a month ago. So where could the ICC play the World Cup? New Zealand have prepped. They're ready for it. Uh, I suppose the quarantine is just the big hurdle. Um, we want to play it. So it doesn't matter where it is. Um, we'll go. Love it. Thank I don't you know if much. that answers your question. It's uh, probably above my pay scale. Uh, there's more as well just asking so many people to do that 10 days quarantine it's not just England and Australia is it it's six other teams it's everyone every, who's going into that country um, yeah every team's coming in on the 10th I think um, and, has, and it just, has to do the, except India and New Zealand they're probably loving it at the moment lovely thanks very much no problems Thanks, Stefan. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Lise. Uh, I will share that recording uh, with everybody as soon as I can. And we'll have Nat Siver available at 10 a.m. same time tomorrow. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. See ya.